Let's take a look at para virtualization and how it's affecting VirtualBox. We'll click on settings on a virtual machine that is turned off. And now we'll click on system and then acceleration, which is the tab all the way to the right. So if we hit the drop down under para virtualization interface, we see none default legacy minimal Hyper-V and KVM. Now the default, what it's gonna do is it's going to attempt to pick the correct one based on the host operating system. And that's typically just fine the way it is. However, we see some other options. Now legacy is going to be any type of virtualization machine that was originally created using an older virtual box, older than version five, because version five is when this came out and we're on version six right now. So if you imported a virtual machine from something that was created with four or older, then you'll want to choose the legacy option. The minimal option is the one you want to use for Mac OS X guests. It's actually mandatory. However, if you choose default, then it should find minimal as the option. But if it doesn't, you can manually specify it here. KVM, this one at the bottom, is for Linux. It's recommended for Linux uh, operating systems. So it would definitely recommend that you choose that. Hyper-V for Windows operating systems. And we also have the option for none. Now this is uh, not necessarily recommended because the para-virtualization interface uh, introduces this additional support which makes things run faster, it gives you better performance, timekeeping accuracy uh, supported for the guest operating systems. So the only time I would choose none is if I'm having problems using the default or the recommended para-virtualization interface uh, manually. So if that's the case, try it with none, see if it becomes more stable. But uh, usually you definitely want to use a para-virtualization interface and default will help find the one that you should have by default. But you can go in, as I mentioned earlier, and choose these manually.